Okay, so this lesson, this is the second half of our parabolas lesson for the conics unit. And today we're going to talk about completing the square in order to write it in a form where we can recognize uh, all the different attributes we need for the formulas. So, uh, if you're from my class, we're looking at worksheets like 4a and b today. This is the second half of the lesson's notes. These are the same formulas we saw in the last notes. So we have both vertical and horizontal parabolas today. But today we're going we're gonna to see some new things show up. All right, so this first question is a warm-up basically from yesterday. So this is not new. <laughs> um, we have to recognize what kind of parabola we have. So since the x minus h component is squared, that means we have a vertical parabola. And the p-value is positive, so that means we have a parabola that opens upwards. And we can identify the p-value, remembering that for the formula, this is 4 times p. So if 4 times p is 8, that means our p-value is 2. And remember, the p-value measures the distance between the uh, vertex and the focus point and the vertex and the directrix line. So for me, the next thing I do is I actually go ahead and I plot what I can. So the vertex is h comma k always. So that would be 1, 2. And from here, I'm going to go over to the graph. So we're plotting a vertex at 1, 2. And we have a vertically up opening parabola. So when I say the p-value is 2, that means your focus is going to be located 2 units above that vertex. And the directrix line is 2 units below that vertex. And I think to keep things consistent, I was using blue for my focus point. So let's go ahead and identify the location of the focus point. Um, clearly, I can see where it's located <laughs> because I graphed it. But um, the formula for the focus point is h comma k plus p. So for us, that would be h comma, and then k plus p would be 2 plus 2, which is 4. I already knew it was at 1, 4, but you know, it's good to confirm things. So there's the focus point. The directrix line is at, for the formula, it's y equals k minus p. So using that same set of clues, 2 minus 2 would be <laughs> y equals 0. But again, I already knew that because I graphed it in visually. That's, that's how I like to approach it. You don't have to approach it that way. I just think it's easier that way. Um, what else do they want? Well, with axis of symmetry, that's the line that's going to go straight through the vertex and the focus. Um, so that would be this line right here. <laughs> Oops. Um, axis of symmetry is x equals 1. The formula is x equals h, so x equals 1 makes sense. And then from here I'm supposed to graph. So remember, graphing, for me, I kind of, I fudge it in basically. This is a pretty, uh, it's a p-value of 2, which means we have a fairly wide parabola. Um, not super wide, like we've seen some huge ones. But what I technically should be doing is I should be finding some ordered pairs, or at least one ordered pair, you know. The problem is it's not in a format that like my brain works well with. So what I usually do is I do a quick rearrangement of this formula and I get it into y equals 1. So the first thing I do is I divide the 8 or I leave it as 1 eighth in front of the x minus 1 squared. And then I'd end up adding the 2 over. So if I think about nice numbers to plug in for x, um, I really don't like to graph fractions. So if at all possible, I want this term to be something that can be divided by 8 eventually. So if I can make this term like a 4, yeah, no, not a 4. A 16, that'd be great. So if I made this 4 squared, this would have to be a 5, right? 5 minus 1 would be 4 squared. So when x equals 5, let's see, that's 16 times 1 eighth, that's a 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. So the point 5, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, is on this side of the parabola. And then, you know, you could kind of visualize where the other point would be. It's 1, 2, 3, 4 points. So 1, 2, 3, 4 points over here. And this is why I don't really bother finding so many points, because even when I find the points, I still can't graph. So that's what we end up with. All right, good enough, right? So let's talk about when it looks like this, because at first glance, I wouldn't really know what kind of conic I have. And in the future, I'm going to ask you to, after completing the square, can you identify what conic we're looking at? Are we looking at a parabola? And if so, which type? Um, are we looking at a circle? Later, we'll learn about, is it an ellipse? Is it a hyperbola? So the problem we have here is there does seem to be a quadratic component to this that is not completed. So we are going to complete the square. However, we are kind of in luck because this quadratic right there, like it is complete. Usually what I do is I add the blank here, but half of 6 squared is 9. So I'm going to cheat, and I'm just going to say this is y plus 3 already squared. And then equals 12 
minus 12. Oh no, I don't like that at all. Remember how the formula looks um, for the, the y squared version? It's y minus k squared equals 4p and then times x minus h. So I need this to look like this. So there must be a common factor I can take out and I want the x term first. So I see the common factor of 12, but I want the x first. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to factor out a negative 12. And that changes this to a negative 1 and this to a positive x. So if I flip that around, that becomes x minus 1. There we go. Now I can see everything I need to see. This is going to be a horizontal parabola. It's got a negative p-value, so it's going to be opening to the left. I just drop, drop myself down a note because because of the visual approach I take, I have to have a little guidance before I get going. Um, the p-value, remember this is 4p. So 4p is negative 12, that means the p-value is negative 3. Um, that's another hint to me that it's going to be opening the opposite direction of what it, a horizontal parabola generally does. So left, left. <laughs> and the vertex I can find pretty easily. It's always at hk, so 1 comma negative 3. All right, so I'm going to start plotting. And then since I know the length of, of the p-value, I can figure out the focus and directrix that way. But yes, I will still go through the formula because I care about you. All right, 1, negative 3. P-value, negative 3 units. So if we're opening horizontally, that would be 1, 2, 3 units this way. So I should have used my right color here, 1, 2, 3. This is the focus, which means the directrix is back this way, 1, 2, 3 units. Now, I can visually see where the focus and directrix are located, but let's talk about the formulas. So for a horizontal parabola, the focus is at h plus p comma k. So for us, <laughs> that means, here's your h. So 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2 comma k, which is negative 3. And negative 2, negative 3 is exactly where I plotted it, so go us. All right, so focus, check, directrix. The directrix for a horizontal parabola is that x equals h minus p. So using our h of 1 minus a negative 3, that gives us, I wrote this really weird, x equals 4, which, yes, it was. Now, the p-value is fairly large, so we're going to have like a super wide parabola. Um, for the sake of time, because I think I have kids coming in, if you don't mind if I just kind of fudge this one in, because frankly, I'm not going to be able to, to graph this well no matter what I do. <laughs> totally looks like that, right? Doesn't look like that. It's actually not bad. All right, so here, the squared term, since I already know I'm in the, the parabola section, I know it's going to be a parabola. <laughs> so this term and this term, I'm going to need to group together, and I'm going to need to complete a square. Now, everything else needs to take a hike. I'm going to bring all the, the quadratic components over to the left side. So x squared, um, I'm going to have to add this over, so plus 6x, and then I will complete the square in a moment. And then this 21 is going to need to move over here. So I still have a negative 20y. And then if I subtract another 21 here, let's see, that's negative 89. That sounds gross, doesn't it? Oh. All right, but remember, we're going to complete the square, so we have to add this blank. At first I was nervous that it wasn't going to work, but I got it. All right, so the blank for completing the square is half of the b term squared. So half of 6 squared is 9. And that means this is a 9 as well. So let's look at what we have. So we completed the square because now we're allowed to write it as x plus 3 squared. And this is a hot mess. We have like a negative 20y. Negative 89 plus 9 is negative 80. Oh, no, this is going to work out great. Um, remember what the form is supposed to look like? It's supposed to have a number factored out in front of like y minus something or y plus something. So if I factor out a negative 20 right here, I end up with y plus 4. All right. So let's talk about what kind of parabola we have. The x plus minus h term is squared, so that means I have a vertical parabola, but the p-value is negative, so my parabola will be opening downwards like so. Uh, a little mental note for me because I'm going to take a, a visual approach in a second. The P value itself, remember this is 4p, so 4p is negative 20, that means p is negative 5. Oh, this is going to be a super fat parabola. Sorry, that's a mean word. A large parabola. Okay. <laughs> um, the vertex is negative 3, negative 4. Let's plot that. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then your 
focus because it's going to be opening downwards. It's supposed to be five units below it. So one, two, three, four, five. Woo! That's, that's going to be bad. All right. The directrix is five units above it. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, boy. Now, I already know where they're located because of the visualization for me. Um, but I'll show you the formula. For a vertical parabola, the focus is at h, com yeah, h comma k plus p. So for us, here's h, here's k. So that becomes negative 3 comma, and then negative 4 plus negative 5 is negative 9. But remember, we already plotted it. I already knew where that was. And then the directrix line for a vertical parabola is at y equals k minus p. So for us, that would be at negative 4 minus negative 5. So it would be a plus 1. Oops. Which, again, I already knew that because I graphed. I'm not even going to bother to find points here, guys, because there is, like, zero chance that even when I find my points that, like, they're going to be, like, way out here. So I really ugly parabola. <laughs> Close enough. All right. Sorry. Talk to a student. All right, we're back. So this next example, number four, um, very similar. We have to kind of go around and look for, you know, who's the, ooh, we have an added bonus level here of common factor of two. Do you see it? So what if, ooh, what if we just divide everything by two? <coughs> That's what I'm going to do. So this becomes negative 17 equals x squared plus 10x plus 4y. So when I look through the problem, the quadratic component is this guy right here. So we're going to have to complete the square there. Um, and I'm also going to flip this equation around just because I want it to look like our, our normal stuff. So x squared plus 10x, we're going to complete the square. This 4y would have been subtracted over to this side, but now it's over here. <laughs> so we have negative 4y, and then we already had a negative 17. All right, but remember, we're completing the square, so that blank has to show up again. So in that blank... Half of this is 5, 25 would be the blank. So what that means for us is this quadratic, now that it's completed, is x minus plus, hello, x plus 5 squared equals, oh gosh, that's a plus 8 here. So if you think about this term being negative 4y plus 8, and what can you factor out of that? We can factor out a negative 4, that will create a positive y value. And then we have a y minus 2. I factor out a negative 4 from here and here. All right, cool. So I can tell that we have a vertical parabola with a negative p value, so that means it's opening downwards again. Cool, cool. All right, where's your vertex? Our vertex is at negative 5, 2. And then your p value, remember this number here is, hello, come on going to be one of those days, huh? This is 4p. So if 4p equals negative 4, that means p is negative 1, which is why it's opening downwards. So I'm going to plot some things here. Negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2. There's the vertex. Your focus would be one unit below that, and your directrix would be one unit above it. All right. So this is a, a what we consider a traditional quadratic as far as the width of it goes. So, in theory, I should be able to graph this really well, right? Nailed it. All right. <laughs> Again, I should be finding at least one point on one side of the parabola, and then I can use some symmetry to, to graph the rest of it, but I can't graph. <clears throat> so you get this. All right, let's talk about where the focus is located. I can see where it's located, but let's talk about the formula. So the formula for focus on a vertical parabola is h comma k plus p. So... Here's k, here's p, so that would be negative 5, comma, 2 plus negative 1 is 1. That's exactly where we graph the focus point. And then the directrix should be at y equals k minus p for a vertical parabola. So for us, k minus negative 1. So 2 minus negative 1 is y equals 3. All right, we did well. Oh, you know what I keep forgetting is the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is... At this line right here, which is y, uh, sorry, x equals negative 5. So on the back of our notes, it gets a little more complicated because I'm going to be giving you some clues about the parabola. Um, and we've, we've done something like this on the previous notes. So 
Um, this first one's not bad at all. It's actually very much like the one we did on, on the last lesson. But it's a good warm-up, so let's look at it. And the vertex is at 2 4, negative 2 4. And the focus is at negative 2 3. So I can tell from the way this is going to open. <laughs> Nailed it again, Abruzzo, good job. Is that we have a vertical parabola. So we have a parabola that's in the form x minus h squared equals 4p y minus k. And we actually, I think we know everything. <laughs> We know the vertex, so we know hk. This is h, this is k. And then I can tell the distance between the focus and the vertex, so that's the p-value, right? And it's a distance of 1, so p is 1. But because it's going down, p is actually negative 1. Adjustment. All right, <clears throat> so our formula is x minus negative 2 would be x plus 2 squared. And then negative 1 times 4 would be negative 4 y minus k, which is y minus 4. All right. Well, that wasn't too bad. Yes, I could have used some formulas there, but I I just really think that if you can see the distance of how large the p-value is, I don't know, I think that's just better. All right, so this next one is not as simple because I'm going to give you the focus, and then I'm going to tell you a point that is on one of the sides of the parabola, like if the parabola goes through this point. This is a lot more complicated than it looks, and for the life of me, I can't think of a better way to teach it, so I apologize if I'm doing this in a very bad way. So let's think about what the focus point is. Um, and probably what we should do is note that it opens to the right, so we have um, this kind of parabola. So y minus k squared equals 4p x minus h. So I'm going to come back to this formula in a minute. But I know the p is going to be positive because it's opening to the right. Um, the focus for a horizontal parabola is h plus p comma k. So what that tells me is that k is 1. And the other clue I can tell right here <laughs> is that h plus p is 2. Now that's a bit of an annoying clue because it doesn't tell me h nor p. Um, but what I can do is I could solve for p, right? If I subtracted h from both sides, p is 2 minus h, which means instead of p in this formula, I can plug in a 2 minus h. I think that might be the way we're going to go. All right. There's this other clue over here. If it's an ordered pair on a function, that's their way of telling me x and y. So this is unusual because we're going to be able to plug in things for now p, and x and y and k. The only thing I really don't have any clues about is, is h. So we're going to leave that alone for a minute. All right, let's start plugging in some stuff. y, which is negative 7, minus k, which is 1, squared, equals, oh, you know what? Back up. I don't really want to distribute that. Back up, back up. I don't want to solve for p. Let's solve for h instead. Sorry. Adjustment. Um, h is 2 minus p. I know you're like, why is that better? It is, just trust me. All right, so 4 times p, leave that alone. But then x is 8 minus, now be careful, if we're subtracting h, we're subtracting a 2, and we're subtracting a p. So if we subtract 2 and then we subtract a negative p, isn't that like a plus p? So I went ahead and distributed the negative. If that bothers you, you can back up a step. You'll have double parentheses over here, but that's okay. Let's clean this up a bit. Um, this is negative 8 squared, so that's 64. I'm going to hold off on this 4p, but 8 minus 6 is... Whoops, whoops, whoops. 8 minus 2 is 6 plus p. Okay, sorry, I'm back. I had another student. All right, where did we leave off here? So I was cleaning this up, right? So, so Okay, so we are going to have to distribute this 4p into here. So right now I have 64 equals gross. 24p plus 4p squared. So we have a lovely quadratic we're going to solve, but I notice that everything here in this quadratic is divisible by 4. So let's make our life easier. The other thing I'm going to do is it's backwards and I hate that. So we're going to reverse this entire equation. So I'm going to write instead of 4p squared because I divided by 4, it's now p squared plus 6p 
and then this is 16, right? So, um, is it 16? I should double check that. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a morning, you know? Totally a 16, but we're going to subtract it over to the other side. So now it's a minus 16. If I go to solve this quadratic, uh, how about p plus 8 times p minus 2? So I do get two supposed answers, but like with everything in math, this is not the end. Um, one of these answers doesn't really make any sense. Remember how we said since it's opening to the right, our p value is positive? So this p of negative 8 doesn't make any sense. So p must be 2. So I'm going to write that down here now. p is 2. And then if you go to this equation, remember h was 2 minus p? So 2 minus 2 means that h is 0. <clears throat> so I think we have everything we need. My vertex is at h, which is 0, comma k, which we already knew was 1. Um, the p value I just figured out was a 2. I think we're ready to go. All right, so our formula, and remember this is the formula we're using, so I'm going to go plug into there. We have y minus k, so y minus 1 squared equals 4 times 2, so 8. And then you can say x minus 0 squared, or you can just call that x squared. That's fine. They want me to graph it. Um, well, I have some good news. <laughs> Since they gave me a point, I'll be able to graph it a little better than normal, in theory, right? So this is 0, 1, where the vertex is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. <laughs> okay, so, totally. Man. I quit. All right. I don't quit. We're going to do one more. At least one more, right? Number seven. Let's take a look. Um, we have a clue. Again, focus point. And this time we're told it's opening downwards. So that tells me that the P is going to be negative. And the formula, because it opens downwards, it's a vertical parabola. So we're going to be using X minus H squared equals 4P times Y minus K. So we, again, we have a point we are given, an xy ordered pair, and then we have a focus point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this focus point, and underneath it I'm going to write out what the formula is for a vertical parabola. So for a focus point for a vertical parabola, it's at h, comma, k plus p. So again, like last time, I'm going to have too many variables going on, so I'm going to take this clue right here, the fact that 4 equals k plus p. And I'm going to solve it for k. So 4 minus p is k. That's what I'm going to plug in for k. For now. Sorry. We had to pledge. So many interruptions today. All right. Um, let's talk about things we can plug in. I didn't talk about this yet, but I do see that h is 1. So that's important. <clears throat> so going to my formula here. x is negative 3 minus h, which is 1, quantity squared equals, I don't know, p. The y is a 1. And then we're going to subtract k. So if we subtract k, which now we know is 4 minus p, we can clean this up a little bit, huh? All right, negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4 squared is 16. Leave the 4p alone for a moment. Let's clean this parenthesis set up right here. Um, we have, let's see, negative 3 plus p. P minus 3 makes me a little happier to put the positive value first. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to distribute. So we do have another quadratic. And these are typically pretty easy quadratics to solve. Just like last time, we have a common factor of 16. Let's get rid of that. No, a 4. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so uh, again, I'm going to flip this totally around because it's backwards. So I'm going to write the P squared first. This is now a minus 3P. And then I would have, this is a 4, but I would have subtracted it over. So this quadratic, when I factor into p minus 4 times p plus 1, I do get two solutions of p equals 4 or p equals negative 1. But remember, this parabola is opening downwards, and we said the p is going to be negative. So that doesn't make any sense for our problem, but p of negative 1 makes lots of sense. So I'm going to jot that down somewhere. It's important. p is negative 1. And then for our vertex, I knew that the h value was at 1, but the k value is 4 minus p. 
So 4 minus negative 1 is a 5. Now I know everything I need. So my formula is x minus h squared equals 4 times p would be 4 times negative 1, so negative 4, y minus k. And then, of course, they want me to graph it. So let's see, vertex at, oh, they're counting my twos. I hate this. All right, 1, 5. Gosh, be golly. All right, and then um, our focus point was at 1, 4. And we said it was opening downwards, and it makes sense for what's going on here. And I'm just going to kind of fudge it in here. I should have graphed negative 3, 1. My bad. See, I did so terrible. Negative 3, 1. Should, it should have gone through right there. A little extra effort here at the end, but I think it's worth it. Okay, ready? <laughs> 3, 1. Negative 3, 1. Ah. And then I have a tech delay. Hold on. You know, this is like a sign that I need to stop this lesson. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so much worse. All right, continue on, guys. I'm going to skip number eight because it's very similar to the ones we just did. So you just got to watch out. Since it's opening left, they're going to have a negative p value on the horizontal parabola. So when you get to that quadratic component. All right, this one's kind of fun. Um, the satellite dish question because this is really what all of this is for. So one of the major applications that we have for parabolic troughs are satellite dishes. And the parabolic dish has an antenna that is two feet from the vertex. That is a very uh, interesting way of saying like the, the p-value distance. So the p is two. Um, assume that the vertex is at the origin. Well, that, that makes this really, really easy, doesn't it? And it points upwards like this. So our parabola it's going to be on that x minus h squared form equals 4p y minus k. And since it's centered at the origin, like you don't have anything here or here, and p is 2, guys, I think, we, I think we're done. So this is x squared equals 4 times 2, so 8 times y. That's pretty easy. All right. <laughs> the next question is an interesting application. It's like an arch. So again, I don't have a parabolic trough uh, application in real life. The St. Louis arch always comes to mind um, when I think about these application questions. So next time you're in St. Louis, check out the arch. Nice parabolic trough. All right, uh, the entrance is a parabolic arch, has two columns, yada yada. They want us to graph it and write the equation. So what I'm going to do, because I do like to have a visual for the graph, I'm going to say that it's centered at the origin here, and then it gives us some clues. Um, it says it's 40 feet across, so, uh, gosh, be golly, that would mean 20, right? So this guy here, 20 in each direction. <laughs> Not there, though. It's down 10 feet, at least. Oh, all right, so down 10 feet, right there. Down 10 feet. There we go. So you have this. You know, I didn't want to jinx myself, but I was pretty proud of that parabola. All right, so our vertex is at 0, 0. Our p-value, however, um, we're going to need to calculate that a little. Well, actually, no, we're not. Because this guy, I should do it in blue because I keep doing focus in blue. That's the focus because it's equidistant from here. Yeah, I think I'm good to go. I think the p-value is, I'm going to call it negative 10 because it's down. And I think we're done. So the vertex, x minus 0 squared, not plus, equals, <laughs> I'm so happy this is my last question, guys. I'm just so tired right now. 4 times p, so 4 times negative 10 is negative 40, and then y minus 0. That's kind of a weird way to write that question, isn't it? So let's just say x squared equals negative 40 times y. The conversation about why the p-value is 10, or negative 10 technically, um, it has to do, do with understanding the equidistance factor. So if, if you're at the focus point, you are equidistant um, on your parabola. Okay, so, sorry, in the middle of something again. Um, the directrix line here, if this is negative 10, this is positive 10, right? The definition of a parabola is that it's all points that are equidistant from a focus to a directrix. So like for instance here, this is, uh, what do we 
we have 20 units going that direction. And if you drop down to the directrix, that's 10 plus another 10, so that's another 20 units. So this is the focus point because of this symmetry right here. It's equidistant from here to here to here. So they didn't outright say like, hey, by the way, that's the point, the focus point. But we could kind of deduce that from the, the measurement and the symmetry of it. So there you go. Part two of parabolas. Our next conic, unless we've gone out of order, is going to be talking about ellipses, which are like ovals. We don't call them ovals. We call them ellipses in here. So good luck.